So previously we talked about Google Plus, which is a, a big social network. It's connected uh, very closely to Google Search. So we saw that if we uh, work with Google Plus, it'll help give us a head start uh, above our competitors that are not on Google Plus. So today we'll talk about uh, Twitter, which is uh, one of my favorite networks. Google Plus and Twitter are my two favorite social networks on a personal level. Uh, and uh, we'll then also talk about some of the other ones. But go ahead and open your web browser and let's go to twitter.com. So we'll just go to the homepage, twitter.com. They've got also around 320 million users. It's a global network. To compare and contrast with Google+, Plus, um, they've also got at least 300 million users worldwide. The numbers on Google+, Plus are a little sketchy, simply because not every company, it's not required for a company to release their, their user numbers. And then also a big company like Google, they kind of lump all of their users together. They don't really differentiate each of their different services. So even though Google is a publicly traded company, Twitter is as well, Facebook is as well, they're required to release some information you know, to investors. But uh, Google, they kind of lump together a bunch of their users into one. So sometimes you see it uh, stats that uh, Google Plus has 300 million users, and sometimes you see it that it has 500 million users. That's obviously a big range. But definitely with Twitter, we can look that up, and they publish that number. And it's about 330 million users worldwide. And so here at Twitter.com, we see the home page where it's got the latest um, tweets. So the terminology in um, Twitter is that these are tweets, or also perhaps known as posts, but they're tweets. If you've heard of uh, Twitter before, uh, you might have heard about its big differentiator uh, compared to other networks, uh, as in what's the limitation that you might have heard of in uh, in Twitter? One hundred and forty characters is the limit of how much you can write per tweet, per post. You have one hundred and forty characters. And those are characters which include letters numbers, spaces, symbols, those little emoji characters that we're seeing more and more nowadays, like this one is a dress, these little icons, all of that adds up to 140 characters. So you might think, I cannot post my brilliant um, comments, my brilliant content in 140 characters. I need a paragraph. <laughs> well, um, Google Plus lets you write a paragraph, lets you write 10 paragraphs, so does Facebook. But really, these social networks are not quite designed for that long attention span consumption. Many social networks nowadays are for more of a, of a short attention span. If I'm browsing, if you're browsing these tweets, you're going to see one sentence, usually, probably a picture, and then probably also links. So if someone is really interested in a particular tweet, there's usually a link that then takes you to the whole 500-word blog post. So in a sense, it's, it's, it's a form of, uh, of advertising to get you to look at something else. Like your selfies have been more deadly than shark attacks for travelers in 2015. <laughs> that sounds interesting, so I'll click on it, and that takes me all over to Condé Nast Traveler, where I can read the full article. Uh, over here, in case of a zombie apocalypse, you'll have to make your own onion dip and then a link to go see that recipe. Or over here, in, um, there's this hashtag. We'll talk about hashtags, of course. Make a note. You're going to see this. This is pretty trendy at the moment. ICYMI. Does anyone know what that might stand for? In case you missed it. <laughs> Blind, long snapper Jay Olson joins USC for first practice as player and a link. So because we have such a small space to work with, 140 characters, there's been a lot of shortcuts and shorthand that make up a modern tweet, such as, uh, you know, TLAs. Does anyone know what a TLA is? 
three-letter acronyms, right? NBA, NFL, uh, LOL, etc. Three-letter acronyms. They don't literally need to be three letters, but acronyms. NASA, I C Y M I, R O F L, etc., etc. All of these keywords that spelled out completely would eat up your character count. So if you write 141 characters, you will not be able to tweet it. It'll it'll prevent you. So things like this shorthand will be useful in Twitter. And we'll talk about hashtags, of course. But the big idea is notice then there's usually a link and a picture. A picture also takes up your character count. I think it's about 16 <coughs> characters. 16 characters. 16 character characters take up your picture, uh, your space. So. The good news, though, is that you can attach up to four pictures, and all four of those pictures will take up the same 16 characters. We'll see that as we do it. So we can put a little mini a web album or photo album of four pictures on a tweet, and it only takes up 16 characters. Same thing with videos and, and links. You can have a link that is, you can have a blog post on your website that is originally 40 characters, and when you add it on Twitter, when you tweet it on Twitter, it'll automatically shrink. And it's also another about 16 characters or so. So you have 140 characters, but there's a lot of shortcuts and shorthand and such to help you get your message across. If we notice here on this homepage, Twitter has tried to be more engaging, especially for people that are brand new to Twitter. You might have heard about it. Um, you don't quite know what it is. Maybe you know it's a social network, but what's it for? What do I need it for? Etc. Um, here on the home screen, there's a search button, featured tweets, news, sports, music, humor, etc. More. So tweets from all over the world, from a variety of people and companies and organizations tweeting out content. And now also what's becoming popular is the animated GIF. So little short animations, usually without sound. Um, this is a little longer and not that interesting, but oftentimes they, they loop. They, they are simple animations. So we'll see all of this, how to do this. I'm just talking in general terms, the character of Twitter which is um, you know, short tweets, pictures, text, links, video, sound could be included as well. So just another form of communication. We've got a company, we want to reach an audience, maybe a particular, a particular um, Twitter account, for example, MLB. They have 5.2 million followers. If you hover over a particular um, profile, it should pop up to give you this preview here. If it doesn't, that's okay. We can see it elsewhere. NASA has 12.2, thankfully. Uh, Skrillex is there too. Let's see, he's got 4.59 million. Forbes, 6.7 million. So here it's going to show you the biggest names in Twitter. Um, usually with a lot of followers and um, I'm just showing this also as an example um, of inspiration because many times people start off uh, using social networks and maybe they have an idea or two and they tweet something they post something on Google Plus Facebook etc and then you hit writer's block what else do I do? Uh, look at the accounts of other of other um, users that are in your niche, in your in your topic. Look at what they're doing to help give you ideas of what you can do. I'm not saying look at a picture and rip it off, or look at some text and rip that off. But I'm saying look at what others are doing, especially those related to what you're trying to sell or do online, and see what they do. So when we, when we get to this, we'll talk about following and a recommendation. I, I didn't quite mention it in Google+, but it applies to all networks. When we get to the uh, to time to follow and such, I would recommend follow accounts that, in a sense, might be your rivals 
if I'm a bakery, if I'm a realtor, if I'm a web designer, perhaps I will follow accounts of those that I'm in competition with. Maybe not directly the company down the street, but maybe another web design company in San Diego, or in California, or in the US, or whatever, Canada. So I'm going to perhaps also follow some competitors so that I can see what are they doing, what's being effective for them to give me ideas of what I can do. Yes? Um, I had signed in. I can't get to a page that has. You're not going to see it unless you're, unless you're signed out on the Twitter homepage. This is the preview screen to entice people to sign up for Twitter. Once you are signed in, then you have customized, tailored content. Because here it's showing me everything. Maybe I'm interested in HDTV, Enrique Iglesias, Good Morning America. I don't know. It's just going to show me a lot of things to maybe interest me. But once we've signed in, we will be able to then keep searching and such to find what we want. So there's no case to just allow you to be able to find what you're even interested in without having to actually be searching? There is. I forget what it's called exactly, but when I log in, I'll, I'll, I'll point it out. Um, so when we looked at Google+, we saw that we had four interactions, four possible interactions. Does anyone remember them from lowest to highest? If there's some content on Google+, what are the four things you could do about it? Like. There's the like, on, but on Google+, Plus it was called a plus one. Good. So on Twitter, the like is the favorite, this little star. So different icon, different terminology, same concept, a like. On Twitter, you give likes, not really, you give favorites. So this particular one has 15 favorites. Uh, this other one over here has another 15. This one here has 536. Okay, that was one of them. What's the next interaction? A share. A share. On Google, on Twitter, they call it a retweet, which is this icon here, this little spinning arrow. Retweet, a share. So this one was enjoyed enough that it was retweeted 121 times. So remember, the reason for a retweet is that uh, content gets spread. We want retweets. We want shares. Because even though if I've only got 10 followers, those 10 followers each could have 10 followers, and I could potentially reach 100 people, 10 times 10. What's the next level of interaction? A comment. So we've got comment here as well, this arrow. They call it a reply. We're replying to a tweet or commenting on a tweet. I don't know why Twitter, the company, doesn't provide a number right here. It seems that there's a space ready to, to show it, but they do not reply it. They do not show a number of how many replies a particular tweet has. And I think that's a, that's a disservice for us as social media marketers because when we get to the point of getting followers and such later, the comment statistic, I think, is one of the most valuable ones to know as opposed to the retweet statistic and the favorite statistic. But you will be able to see how many replies there are if you click on the, on the time or the day that a particular tweet was posted. Notice each tweet has a time. That was 15 hours ago. That was two hours ago. If you click on a time of a tweet, it should then expand to show you the tweet uh, in more detail, and then it'll show you the comments. It doesn't give you a number, uh, but it'll show you the comments. And later on, we'll talk about, well, why do we want to care about comments on a tweet? That was the third one. What's the fourth one? Follow. A follow. So the same thing here on... Um, <laughs> that's right. But on Twitter, it's a, it's a follow. Uh, Google Plus has the terminology of circle, but it's still the concept of a follow. So if I wanted to follow USA Weekly, I can hover my mouse over their, their name, and it, it may pop up like this. If it doesn't, that's okay. You can also see that by clicking on the account name. It'll then show you the account in total, and there should be a follow button. If we try to follow right now, it'll say, please sign up for Twitter. Um, we'll get to that in a moment. But those are the four interactions. We, we heard of them before on, on Google+, and we're going to hear them again also 
uh, when we talk about um, uh, Facebook and um, Pinterest and YouTube, they all have the similar type of um, concept but different terminologies. So we want all four of them also. Question? I haven't said it yet, okay. um, and that'll make more sense once we look at a particular account. So I'm just going to pick on any one of these. Um, let's go with NASA. Let's say I look at NASA's profile. So click on any, any profile name itself. Previously, we were looking at a bunch of a, a wall of tweets, stuff that's happening. Then you click on a, a particular profile, and then it shows you. We saw it briefly when we looked at uh, Mashable's social media profiles last week. But here we're focusing, let's say, NASA. It has an icon. It has a, uh, a background graphic, a cover image, I, I think the exact term is. Just branding to catch your attention. And um, this then changes size if you're on a mobile device, if you're on a tablet. On the left, uh, we've got a little bit of information here, the name NASA, and then this thing here, and a little blue check mark. Twitter has what are known as verified accounts, because uh, anyone can create a Twitter account, and therefore someone might have created a Twitter account already with your name. Maybe you're not the only uh, Joe's Pizza in the world because this is global, remember. So someone in Italy might have taken Joe's Pizza, even though your family has had that for 20 years. So this is always a problem with, with social networks in that if your name is taken, most likely you won't be able to get it. Uh, this is one of the things I think that all of the social networks really need to address because there are accounts that people created five years ago and haven't tweeted in four and a half but you cannot take that name because the name's already taken even though the account is barren and it's a whole thing and unfortunately the companies don't really help the little person claim that uh, that name. They'll easily help Justin Bieber claim that name, they'll help NASA claim that name, they'll help the city of San Diego claim that name, but for us little people I, I really don't think there's much recourse at the moment. You would have to choose something. If, if Joe's Pizza was taken we'd have to maybe be the original Joe's Pizza. Well, that one might be taken too, so then we have to figure out what, what a name we can claim that isn't already claimed. Can you change it? Uh, not so much the name. Um, to say you wrote something and it had a capital letter and you wanted it to be lowercase, can you go in and edit as long as it's the same name? On the name right here? Mm -hmm. Yes, definitely. You can edit it, you can change it to anything else, or you can edit it with capital letters and such. When we will log in, we'll see, we'll see how to do that. So capital letters and such is useful in a name because then it's easier to read. There's a biography. We're, we're going to talk about writing a biography, but if we already wrote one for Google+, Plus, we can reuse it. Um, we can reuse that name. And so we've also got a limitation here. I believe it's 160 characters. So they give you a little bit more space for a biography, but not as much for an actual tweet. There's going to be a spot to add a link so a link back to our website, for example, because remember, we cannot sell a product directly on Twitter. We cannot sell a product directly on Facebook. We cannot get subscribers to our newsletter directly on Pinterest, etc., etc. We cannot complete that action on the social networks. We have to guide people back to our website where they can actually, you know, donate, purchase, sign up, contact you, etc. There's a stat about how long the account has been out there, and then pictures and videos. So, so far, uh, Twitter, uh, um, NASA, has been around since 2007 on Twitter, and they've tweeted six, nearly 7,000 pictures and videos. And they're all online? It's all online? That's right. So that's one of the things about the Internet, basically. We should all realize this by now, after, the, after it being around our lives for 25 years, Whatever you put on the internet will probably stay there forever unless you remove it. And even if you remove it, that's no guarantee that it's gone because it's easy to make a copy of things online. So realize that whatever you put online will probably be there for a while. So think about it in terms of professionalism. 
Um, so they've been around since 2007. Twitter has been around since, since I think, middle of 2006 or early 2006. So they're about to celebrate 10 years of a social network with billions of tweets. Uh, we'll look at Facebook later. It's been around since 2004. And so the new kid on the block is Google+. Plus. They've been around since 2011. And other networks have come out, Pinterest and Periscope and etc. So if I look at a particular account, I see some statistics also at the top. NASA has tweeted 38,000 times. Well, specifically, 38,847. So there's no limit to how many tweets you can, you can post per day. Well, actually, I think there is a limit per day, but I think it's 200. So you're probably gonna, not going to tweet 200 times a day. And so uh, we have the 140 character limitation, but it's not quite a limitation once you get the hang of it. You can post or you can tweet as many times as you want. Here's one thing that's annoying for, newbie, for newbies, for beginners. Let's say I tweeted something amazing, and then uh, I come back an hour later and I check, oops, I misspelled it. There's no way to come back and, and edit a tweet. Once it's published, that name, what you tweeted, is permanent, permanently misspelled. The way around that, as we'll see, is we have to delete the tweet and tweet it again. We can't edit the tweet. On Google+, Plus, we can go back and edit posts, no problem. On Facebook, we can do it also. Twitter does not allow us to do that. So double-check your spelling. And if you made a mistake, no problem. Delete it, as we'll see how, and tweet it again. You notice Twitter is real time. In the time that I've been talking and looking at the NASA account, they've tweeted one new time. So the latest tweet from NASA, which is actually a retweet, a share. They shared the president's tweet. So there's this controversy going on about a kid that uh, built a clock and they, they mistook it for a bomb and they arrested him. So he's being invited by the president to come to the White House to smooth it out. And so um, we'll talk about that as well, retweeting. Why would you want to retweet? Uh, how to get retweets, the value of a retweet and such. And so NASA shared that from the president's account. At the top, we've then got following and followers. Following is that NASA is connected to, is paying attention to, following 242 accounts on Twitter. As I said, there's like 320 million. And NASA has followed 242 of them. When we sign in, we'll be able to see who are those that they are following and why that's valuable also to know. So they're paying attention to 200, 242 accounts. And then 12.2 million Twitter accounts are paying attention, are following, are followers of NASA. Sorry, the, the terminology is so similar sometimes, but NASA is following these accounts, and NASA has these number of followers. 12.2 million are paying attention to NASA. 12.2 million accounts on Twitter are paying attention to NASA. So every time NASA tweets or retweets, those 12.2 million followers could see it. <clears throat> That's the point of the social networks, to have an audience. So imagine if NASA once in a while tweets out, please donate, we've got our, we've got our budget cut again. So they could donate. Obviously not all 12 million people are going to click the donate button. Let's say 1% of them do that. Half a percent. What's half a percent of 12 and a half million? At least a thousand people. I'm terrible at math. At least a thousand people donated. That's some money for NASA. So taking the same idea from Google Plus previously, we want to build uh, a follower base so that when we tweet, if we keep in mind that perhaps 1% are, are going to be the most engaged, maybe I've got a great account and great products and such, and maybe 10% are engaged, even better. Maybe 50% are engaged, even better. But worst case scenario, 1% of people might be the only ones that are really caring about what you're tweeting and if that one percent is enough to sustain your business that's a win because all of this is is pretty much free 
the tweets and the photos and the videos, as opposed to when I said last week, Bed Bath & Beyond spent millions of dollars to get that coupon out to everyone in San Diego, and maybe if only 1% really uses the coupon, did they get their return on investment? Maybe, maybe not. Here, that return on investment could be a lot higher because all of this is free to some degree. You said you can't sell your stuff on Twitter, but can you that Well, I mean that there is not going to be any button on Twitter that says buy now or donate now technically. You're not using the Twitter system to sell anything or to claim donations or to get subscribers. So even when I said about donations, that's still going to be a link over to some other e-commerce site where they can actually accept the donation. We'll talk about favorites and lists later, but this will show publicly all of the tweets that NASA has favorited. So think about that, because sometimes people will talk about the the value of favoriting, but then people forget this is public, so you might be favoriting things that you might not want people to know that your account is favoriting, especially if you forget that you're in the business account as opposed to your personal account. And lists. Uh, it's a little more complex. We'll talk about it later. So you can go back and see everything that you favorited mm -hmm. as the other adjustments you made? That's right. Are you saying favorite? Does that mean it's not the same as likes? Yeah, like I said earlier, that the terminology of Twitter is that it's a favorite, but on Facebook it would be a like, and on Google Plus it would be a plus one. All the same, different uh, words for the same concept, to like it. So, so right here, the president's tweet has been liked, has been favorited 200,000 times, has been retweeted 220,000 times. Well, yes. So is a like from NASA or somebody liking what NASA said? The, these are the likes, these are the favorites that NASA gave a tweet. Okay. These are the, the tweets that NASA liked. Okay. Not, not the likes of people giving NASA. You see that on individual tweets. This individual tweet from NASA has been liked by the users of Twitter 780 times. So you see that on a per tweet basis. The number at the top is the tweets that NASA has liked. Okay. Thanks. Mm -hmm. And so this will make more sense as we do it, of course, but um, it's got its own terminology, its own culture, its own demographics. Let me touch a, a, a bit on comparing and contrasting um, the two networks we've looked at so far. So we've looked at Google Plus and, and we're going to look at Twitter. Uh, so Google Plus tends to skew toward or has the demographic of, of tech savvy people. Google Plus is sort of like for early adopters and sort of uh, um, you know tech heavy people and and, and, and so um, if you're trying to reach an audience that is into technology, Google Plus might be a good choice, especially Android users. So let me write this down here. Talk a little bit about demographics. Google Plus. Let's see demographics. Google Plus uh, skews toward tech savvy people. Um, Android users and male. So these things shift, of course, as they become more popular. Uh, these are what the trends are. This does not mean that you will not reach a female audience. This does not mean you won't reach a, a um, an iPhone loving audience. This does not mean you will you will not reach an audience that is into um, you know, uh, sports. It just means that the demographics lean toward that, to those keywords. So if that's what your company is trying to reach, you might do well on Google+. On Twitter, the big thing about them is that uh, Twitter is a bit more skewing toward younger audience. And younger audience really is a bit subjective, but you have to be at least 13 years old to use Twitter. So we're going to say between 13 
and 30. Um, and so if you're, if you're looking for a particular age range, uh, younger people are using uh, Twitter more because it's so immediate. It's on, it's on your phone. Uh, it buzzes. You get a tweet. You check it out. You follow, uh, you follow the link. You do something. You put it away. Another tweet. You look at that again. And so it's younger. I would also say uh, shorter attention span <laughs> because the tweets are literally short. And then also with uh, so many coming out, you can follow as many accounts as you want. So much content just zooming by you that it's often for shorter attention spans. What Question. Exactly does Android user mean? I mean, I understand you that they use an Android, but what does that say about a person versus iPhone? Does it make somebody know that, hey, I want to talk to Android users? Well, these little computers in our pockets, unfortunately, nowadays, have so much allegiances. People love these things. <coughs> People swear by them. And so if you've got an iPhone, you're, I'm not saying that for every iPhone user here, but it shows that you know iPhone users might be snobby. Oh, that, that Android device. Android device, people might be, oh, those iSheep. You know, people really defend these pieces of technology, unfortunately. So if you are trying to post your app and at the moment it's only iPhone only and you're posting it to you know a tech savvy community that is a bit more toward Android well you're either gonna get ignored worst case scenario or best case scenario worst case scenario you might get you know negative posts so I'm not saying that iPhone users not welcome I'm just saying that I think I showed previously that the Android community had over 1 million followers I forgot to look up the uh, the iPhone community, but I don't believe it had a million followers. So I'm just showing that the numbers seem to go to people that are using Android software, open source software. But again, you're not going to be limiting. You're not going to be limited if you don't try to target those specific groups. Yes. I don't have an iPhone, so I don't know any of this stuff that you're talking about. But what do people say about Android? It's all the same. Everyone loves their device so much they're going to say, oh, I, Android users, they're, they're so nerdy, they're so techy, they're not, you know, um, thinking about important things. So this is all generalization. But it's just that every, every, you know, people make groups and people want to be in the in-group. And that's in the world of video games, that's in the world of comic books, that's in the world of technology. Everything can make you an in-group. Uh, you know, in the whole, in the whole world of, of knitting, I bet the quilters look down on the yarn people. <laughs> and uh, those that crochet are the worst. And I don't know. So every group divides itself up. And so... Um, you're still going to find an audience. There's hundreds of millions of users. So um, if you are an iPhone user, a Windows Phone user, a BlackBerry user, there's going to be a place for you on all of these networks. But if you're particularly trying to target a particular audience, like on Twitter, a younger audience, you, you're still going to find people that have an AARP um, membership. But I'm just saying, <laughs> but I'm just saying that uh, if you're trying to target this audience, you're going to find that audience a little more readily. Mm -hmm. um, is, uh, I know the, what's called an Android device, but it's just a tablet. Uh -huh. uh, it, is it limited to just tablets, or is it the term you use for cell phones too? Android is, the term Android is a very generic term, which does apply to phones and tablets, and even some laptops have Android installed. It's just the operating system. So uh, okay, it so doesn't matter. It's just the, the brand? Uh, is it like a brand? Not really. It's the operating system. Like these computers here use Windows. Yeah. And, and other computers use Apple, you know, OS X. It's the operating system. It's what runs the computer itself. It's like the equivalent of the iOS. Um, yes, the operating system. So um, that's a couple of notes on demographics there. Uh, I'll give you a little preview of some other networks here as we get to them. Um, we can say Pinterest. Question. Well, how do these demographics evolve? I mean, I don't think Twitter started just to 
target that audience? I mean, how it does evolve organically because, for example, Google Plus in the beginning, because many of the things that Google does are very nerdy, um, they had an invite-only process in the beginning of Google Plus. You had to have an invite to join Google Plus. Not anyone could do it. And therefore, in the beginning, Google was trying to seed this network with tech journalists and pundits and bloggers and such, and have them be the spokesperson and use Google Plus to then spread it out. Well, if they targeted a tech-savvy seed that then spread out to more tech-savvy connectors, and then so that's why it's a bit more tech-savvy. It's early adopters and all of that. Uh, Twitter, it was originally started as a way, it was sort of like to replace text messaging on your phone, you know, the short SMS text message. They wanted to make some sort of network to actually let, like, for example, firefighters communicate with each other quickly. Send a tweet about a fire or, or, or that, uh, you know, meeting at the, at the base and whatever. Short messages. And obviously that has evolved into a communication tool for many users, but simply because it's so quick, it's so short attention span, you can do acronyms, and sometimes you have to do the acronyms because you have so, sh so little characters to work with just kind of has evolved. But again, I'm not saying only young people use Twitter. I'm just saying that this is what leans toward. Yes? So, I noticed that we're not talking about MySpace. Mm -hmm. what is the, I haven't been on MySpace for years. Mm -hmm. so what's the issue there? It's passe, unfortunately. Um, things come and go. MySpace was very hot. It was number one for a long time. It just kind of collapsed in on, a, in on itself because it had the ability to be customizable, which made it too customizable. Do you remember those MySpace profiles with animated graphics and lots of colors and videos playing all the time and a sound suddenly blasting through your speakers when you visited someone's profile? Well, they had too much customization. Suddenly Facebook came along and it was just clean blue and white. People said, I like this. So they started to leave MySpace more and more and more. And MySpace is still around. They did a rebranding. It's much more cleaner and interesting and all that, but it's, it's past. This stuff just goes on so fast that what might be hot at the moment might not be in the future. Twitter was the more popular than Facebook, which is more popular than yeah. Facebook. I recognize Facebook is very popular in the future, so it's coming back. Exactly. So if we, were, if we were a band, I would be saying MySpace might be a good place to get into. Even though it's definitely past its heyday, it has a dedicated community musical. But. Not, a, not, not too useful for most people anymore. So is MySpace something that's free to? It is. And would you say it's popular with musicians? Yes. So one of the other ones we'll be talking about is Pinterest. This one, really the big demographic, is women. Ah. <laughs> so if you're trying to target women, uh, age ranges, What's the opposite of younger? I want to use the right word. <laughs> I'm going to say not younger. Mature. That's better. Yes. So 30 plus. Um, and maybe mature is not quite the right one either. There's never the, there's never the right term, right? I'll just say 30 plus. Uh, so a woman, 30... Uh, or and again, every age range is is going to fit because you have to be at least 13 years old to use all of these, uh, according to their terms of service. So um, this is the demographic there, and then of course that does not mean you will not reach uh, tech savvy men on Pinterest. It just means that if you're trying to target a particular <coughs> audience, it might behoove you to use a particular network to reach that audience that it leans toward. That's the biggest thing. That's the biggest selling point about Pinterest, and it is also has a few hundred million users, and growing. Um, it's the current darling of, of social media at the moment. Pinterest. What's that? I'm gonna say the name even sounds good. It makes me think of Pinterest. I don't know what the word means. I looked it up once to figure out why you would call a website. Okay. Good point. Isn't that something you have to have an invitation? Not anymore. Pinterest used to need invitations, and so did Google Plus and other networks, but eventually they make it open for everyone, so not at the moment. Mm -hmm. 
I, I'm sure we can look up exactly the, the meaning behind the name, but uh, I believe interest is part of it, and then pin as in pinning on a board. But when we get to Pinterest, we'll, we'll dive more into it. Um, we've got then Facebook, the demographic for Facebook. The easiest way to say it is everyone, <laughs> which is a double-edged sword, as we'll get to it. Facebook has over a billion users worldwide, actually more like one and a half billion users. So it's got the largest amount of people using it on a daily basis. I believe they recently celebrated the milestone that one billion people used it in one day. Uh, and so that's great for us as a company because there's so many people we can reach. But that's bad for us because there's so many people we can reach. Therefore, we're going to be a needle in a haystack. And so it has its own tricks that we need to engage in, not tricks, tactics that we need to engage in uh, to reach the right audience. But we could reach a really dedicated audience on Facebook. And when we get to that, I believe next week, uh, we'll... We'll talk about that. So these demographics, in, in a sense, sometimes they're kind of nebulous enough, general enough, that they might not be that useful. But you're going to see articles all the time that are going to try to pin this down for you. And this changes all the time. So I'm kind of being vague-ish like this because it does change. And the short answer is you will be able to find your audience unless it's a really esoteric niche network. There are some of them out there that only have like I don't know, 100,000 users. They might be invite only and such. But I'm not going to get to those. I'm getting to the big ones. And next month, of course, we'll talk about some other ones, YouTube and so forth. But we'll get to that later. So these are the ones we're going to talk about this month. Uh, any other questions here? OK, so. How many of you currently have a Twitter account? How many of you currently have a business Twitter account? Okay, Those of you that have the business account, how many of you have tweeted within the last month? Within the last week? Within the last hour? <laughs> <laughs> so there's no right or wrong answer, but I'm just saying that, okay, if you don't have a Twitter account, we're going to create one in just a moment. The thing about Twitter that's a little different than uh, Google Plus and Facebook is there's no difference between a business Twitter account and a personal Twitter account. Remember, there was a big difference on Google Plus. We needed to create a personal profile on Google Plus and Facebook, and then we can create business pages on Google Plus and Facebook. But on Twitter, no difference. A person, a company, an organization, a nonprofit, a brand, a product itself, a fictional character, all of those can create a, um, an account. What we can do is then um, have managers, in a sense, as well. We can have other people log in to control that account. Um, it's it's not as straightforward as Google Plus or Facebook, but we'll we'll talk about it. Um, if you want to make a note of it, we'll come back to it. But it's something called TweetDeck, um, specifically TweetDeck.twitter.com. We'll get back to it. But this is the tool that we would use to have multiple managers. It is an official Twitter product. It used to be a separate company. Then it was bought by Twitter. It's integrated to Twitter, into Twitter. I really like it. And the big selling point is that it lets multiple people manage one Twitter account more securely. Because in the old days, just a few years ago, everyone needed the same password to log into that Twitter account. So if one person has great cybersecurity um, tactics and the other person does not, and that one person gets hacked, the whole company account, the whole company Twitter account got hacked. And that happened to Chipotle. Last year, when I taught this class, suddenly, I remember it, it was a Saturday night, I was watching TV, I was on Twitter at the same time, and then uh, suddenly Chipotle started to trend. We'll talk about what a trend is. And people were saying, why is Chipotle suddenly tweeting racist things and swastikas and things? <laughs> and then I looked at it, and at that moment, Chipotle was putting out racist things. They had gotten hacked in the middle of the night on a Saturday night. And uh, it took a few hours, but then they claimed it back. 
Um, and you don't want that. And one of the ways to prevent that is uh, using multiple managers with their own credentials. That's what tweak that will let us do. We'll see it later. All right, so. Um, something actually happened. It's really hard to bring it back. Like, we're all small businesses. Like, yeah. I don't know what to do. Yeah, unfortunately, it is. Um, you know, these big companies, if Courtney Kardashian got hacked, you, she'd get her account back in two minutes. But luckily and unluckily, I haven't had to deal with that with any clients, so I can't tell you firsthand how easy it is to get it back or not. But when we set up the account and we talk about security, I'll talk about the best security settings and such to hopefully prevent that from getting hacked and to get it back. Uh, yeah, I, I don't have first-hand knowledge to really tell you how easy it is to, to fix it. Yes? I had my WordPress account hacked recently. Oh. And it took me about two weeks to get it back. Hmm. A lot of back and forth. Who did you have to connect with? Uh, I had to with? connect with my hosting company. And I had to connect with a web designer to get a fresh version because I didn't have a backup. Yeah, that's that's going to be a different can of worms, but good thing you got it back. Twitter here is the main company we, who, we, who we would have to deal with, and there is a help button somewhere at the very bottom, help. So if you scroll all the way down, eventually you, you'll see help, and I, and I believe in there is going to be a process to try to get your account back. So it's not as easy as just changing your password. If someone hacked into their, your account and they're savvy enough, they might have changed your password. So then how can you get back into your account? Now, if you're, if you're already logged into your account and you're in the account, that might help you to kind of change the password to get it back. But if they're savvy, they're, they're going to be they're going to be doing some of those things like they did with Chipotle. They totally locked them out. Um, it took a few hours to get it back. So let's start the process to create an account. If you've already got an account, you can continue to use it. Or you can create a brand new account because these things are free. Uh, and after you learn what we're going to learn, then you can decide to use that new account, shut down that account, whatever. But I'm going to create a new account. We'll do this together. And then um, talk about best practices. Then, then we'll take a break. But at the very top right corner, we've got either log in or sign up. If you have an account, go ahead and log in. If you don't have an account, we'll click Sign Up. It's going to ask you, join Twitter today. Full name, phone number, or email, password. Now, this full name here, this is one of the little confusing things we'll see throughout Twitter. Full name. When I was looking at NASA, for example, let's see, BBC World is a good example. BBC World has a name right here, BBC News World. And then it has another name here, BBC World. This name that is written up here is what it's asking for us on that screen. This full name. It's asking for this. And that has a limit, I think maybe 15 or 19 characters. That name right there that it's asking for us right now is not unique. So I can right now create a brand new Twitter account called BBC News World, and it will let me. It'll let me create an account called The White House. It'll let me create an account called Hillary Clinton. It will let me. On the next screens, we will see to claim this username, which is the unique one that only one account in the whole world can have. That's the one that I'm saying. If someone took that name, you cannot take this name. This one with the at symbol. On the next screen, we'll see how to claim that. But on the full name that it's asking you, it's this name here, which is not unique. That's why there's more than one Justin Bieber on Twitter, but there's only one Justin Bieber. Question for you. Um, I'm getting to that. Uh, so here it's asking for a full name, and that can be the name of your name, or you know, as a person, or the name of your company, or anything you want there. Let's say I'm making this for my company, Victor's Bakery. So I can type here capital letters, apostrophes, spaces, exclamation points, all of that stuff. 
and here it's it's letting me a little check mark appeared later on when we see the username that's going to be much more limiting when we get to the username we're not going to be able to have spaces apostrophes exclamation points etc question uh, can you change your name if, if later choose to change your business name. We can change all of these things, definitely. Phone number or email, this is to verify to verify you that you're not a spam bot. So either phone number or email, plug that in. Password, you can change this of course later. Try to choose a good strong password. You can tell how strong it is with that little bar growing. If you've got a, a red one, uh, that's going to make you prone to get hacked. Because if you've got a weak password, um, the hackers out there have software that can try a thousand passwords per second, even faster than that. And so if you have a password that is on the green, that's going to be harder for, for them to crack. Question? Um, I I have an existing account. And let's say it's Robert Mon Montana Long. At Rob Montana Long. Mm -hmm. Rob Montana Long is a great uh, website. Mm -hmm. How do I change that part not to have somebody? Once I create the account here and I log in, I'll be able to show everyone how to change these things. So because Twitter is a publicly traded company, and what that means is that you can buy stock in Twitter in the stock market. And when a company is publicly traded, it means now then it has to keep its shareholders happy. So I hate to break it to you, but Twitter nowadays, Facebook, Google, a lot of them nowadays are in it for their shareholders, not for you, unless you're a shareholder. So nowadays when a company is public, like Walmart, like Verizon, like Coca-Cola, like Disney, they're all in it for their shareholders when they're a publicly traded company. So what I'm getting at is you're going to start to see ads on Twitter. They're not very intrusive nowadays, honestly. Who knows if that will change? It will probably change, unfortunately. But we see ads a lot on Facebook. There's no way to get out of those ads. On Pinterest, ads are starting to creep in a little bit. Also, pretty subtle. Google Plus, at the moment, is one of the ones that does not have any ads. Well, Google can afford it. Google Plus has the parent company of Google, which has deep pockets. So they don't have to put ads on their social network. But Twitter does, and Facebook, and Pinterest, and all of them are going to have ads. Instagram, suddenly that has ads now, and people hate Instagram for a day, and then they love it again. Just like Facebook. <laughs> so um, what this is getting at, Taylor Twitter, based on my recent website visits. Twitter is going to put a, a cookie on your computer um, that, obviously, the worst way to say it is, monitors your traffic online. The best way to say it is, customizes your experience uh, and all those websites do it and all the networks do it have you ever noticed you visit a website you see some product then you go to some other website and it remembers you and it followed you and that ad is on that other website or in Facebook or the other networks well those are all cookies they're all over the place um, and so if you turn this off you will not see tailored content on Twitter you will see general stuff if you turn that off that does not mean turn off ads there's no way to turn off ads this is just gonna then if you turn that off it will not show you ads that you might be interested in it'll show you generic dumb stuff you might not be interested in if you leave that on it might show you ads and content about technology that you like or uh, celebrities that you like and such so Twitter will be more tailored to you if you leave that on. There's no right or wrong answer. It will not turn off ads. You can choose whatever you want there. Yes? So they will um, monitor your activity regardless of whether you click that or not. Mm -hmm. Like pretty much every other website nowadays, unfortunately. I'm just curious. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's, uh, that's a fact of life nowadays, but, but guess what? We have the power to complain to the companies, to go to their help center, to uh, complain on the social networks, to get our friends and family to do it, to get our legislators to do it. Uh, these networks here are private companies, but serving a public, and it's up to us to um, you know, ask for it, to agitate for it, to make it work for us. And if we just accept it and turn it on and move on, things might not improve.
question. The last line there, other than the able to find you, like you know, it's the ability to find you. So that means that whatever you put up in that line is accessible by anyone on the internet? On Twitter, okay. which could be found on Google, yes, but on another screen, we can limit that. Right now, it's just giving you sort of like the biggest blanket to cover you. Later on, we'll, um, uh, we'll talk about limiting that stuff, making it more private. So I'm going to click Sign Up. It's asking for phone verification. It might ask you for phone verification even though I put in an email and this is because Twitter accounts are free and therefore if we can create them spammers can create them and so here it's asking us to verify a phone number. Some of you may have seen this, some of you may have not. Uh, I don't believe I will proceed here because I've already used up all my phone numbers with Twitter so uh, I'm gonna give it a try and see if it lets me if it doesn't, then we'll do a different tactic here. How many of you got a pop-up or a screen here that says phone verification? Uh, oh, too many of us. Okay, well, you can decide to add it or not. And again, um, your phone number failed. Okay. Uh, if, you, if you don't want to do this, uh, we, we will not be able to proceed, and that's okay. You can just take notes. Yeah, I've already used my, my phone number and such, so I can't proceed from this screen. Uh, so I won't be able to show you exactly the full process, but um, if you got to this screen and the next screen, you're going to see various other welcome and sign up screens. Um, just for the moment, click next on them and just proceed. Uh, we're going to take a short break here just to make sure everyone has created an account. When we come back, hopefully we all have an account then I can show you how to use it. So it's 1.40, we're going to take a 10 minute break, we'll be back at 1.50. Uh, call me over if you need a little help.